July the 30th, 2024. Let us gather together and experience the goodness of God. Pastor Trey Comstock. We'll begin with our scripture of the week, 2 Samuel chapter 11, verses 1 through 15, in a piece by Pastor Emily Larson entitled, That King David. Then, Pastor Emily and I will talk scripture, and more specifically, how ending this story with the death of Uriah puts the spotlight on human failings, and that we all, literally all, have the capacity to fail. But first, a reading from 2 Samuel chapter 11, verses 1 through 15. In the spring of the year, the time when kings go out to battle, David sent Joab with his officers and all Israel with him. They ravaged the Ammonites and besieged Rabbah, but David remained at Jerusalem. It happened late one afternoon when David rose from his couch and was walking about on the roof of the king's house that he saw from the roof a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful. David sent someone to inquire about the woman. It was reported, This is Bathsheba, daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. So David sent messengers to get her, and she came to him, and he lay with her. Now she was purifying herself after her period. Then she returned to her house. The woman conceived, and she sent and told David, I am pregnant. So David sent word to Joab, Send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. When Uriah came to him, David asked how Joab and the people fared and how the war was going. Then David said to Uriah, Go down to your house and wash your feet. Uriah went out of the king's house, and there followed him a present from the king. But Uriah slept at the entrance of the king's house with all the servants of his lord, and did not go down to his house. When they told David Uriah did not go down to his house, David said to Uriah, You have just come from a journey. Why did you not go down to your house? Uriah said to David, The ark and Israel and Judah remain in booths. And my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are camping in the open field. Shall I then go to my house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife? As you live and as your soul lives, I will not do such a thing. Then David said to Uriah, Remain here today also, and tomorrow I will send you back. So Uriah remained in Jerusalem that day. On the next day, David invited him to eat and drink in his presence and made him drunk. And in the evening he went out to lie on his couch with the servants of his lord, but he did not go down to his house. In the morning, David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. In the letter he wrote, Set Uriah in the forefront of the hardest fighting, and then draw back from him so that he may be struck down and die. I'll never forget the time one of my parishioners first heard me use a curse word. This particular gentleman had a complicated past that included lots of drugs and rock and roll. He had left that world behind and dedicated his life to following God and to serving the church. He had in his mind the impression that all of us pastors were perfect people that deserved to be on pedestals, who never struggled with sin and would never deign to use language that he associated completely with his former lifestyle. The day that I first said a swear word in front of him, I think I saw his jaw literally hit the floor. You could see the wheels in his head turning as his brain tried to comprehend what he had just heard me say. If that moment were portrayed in a movie, you would have heard a record scratch, followed by a long pause for dramatic effect. In that moment, he realized that pastors are people too, that we don't live in a perfect Christian bubble that sequesters us from the rest of the world. We put our pants on one leg at a time, and we are as equally capable of royally messing up as everybody else around us. In short, he learned that nobody is perfect, and that we are all humans in need of God's redeeming grace. You know that old adage, never meet your heroes because they might disappoint you? The disappointment that we feel when we find out somebody that we looked up to isn't as great as they're hyped up to be can be devastating. Today's scripture is a great example of that. We get to see this up close and personal picture of a monumental failure on the part of King David. King David, the man after God's own heart. King David, the perfect seventh son of Jesse who was out tending his sheep before he was anointed the next king of Israel. King David, the boy with the good countenance who stood up to and defeated the Philistine giant Goliath. 
King David, who united Israel, defeated armies, established Jerusalem as the capital city, built a palace, received a divine promise of an everlasting dynasty. King David, who loved God enough to make a spectacle of himself by dancing in his skivvies in the streets and having cake. That King David, the one that everybody loves, everybody's hero. This next story about King David is one that centers as the hinge pin of his life. Before these poor choices, David is exalted by God from shepherd boy to successful warrior king. After this story, David's entire family has a shocking downfall. He has to run for his life, and Israel is eventually divided and hauled away into exile. This tipping point is where the dream ends and the nightmare begins. We tend to put our heroes, be they Bible heroes, modern day preachers and prophets, political leaders, celebrities, or otherwise, on a pedestal. We can become so personally invested in their lives that we feel wronged when we find out about their ability to be human. When Olympian and fellow Houstonian Simone Biles had to step down from some of the gymnastics events in the 2020 Tokyo Olympics, citing mental health reasons, I remember the shock of many of her admirers. They couldn't believe that this superhuman gymnast would need a break. She made such a positive impact in the mental health world by claiming the need to preserve herself and her own mental wellness over the expectations of those around her. Some headlines from our heroes are much less flattering. Every week, we can hear more sensational news about somebody in power who was caught up in some moral scandal or ethical conundrum. It is usually somebody who thought that their position of power would protect them and their reputation. Politicians seem to be an easy target for this, but Others in the public eye are just as scrutinized, but we know that nobody is above temptation. Nobody, aside from the perfect person of Jesus, has lived a sinless life. The fact that David's story of adultery and murder survives is a testament to the importance of this fact. It would have been easy for early church writers and scribes to omit this from the history and to paint David in a better light. Yet this story survives as evidence that even our beloved King David is not without fault. Perhaps that is precisely why we include this story in our lexicon still today. To know that even those who are called after God's own heart can mess up. To know that no matter how far we fall, God will always be there with a message of grace and redemption to pick us back up again. So as you just heard in the piece, uh, this scripture was a little bit more difficult. You know, we were talking about it yesterday. Not all of our uh, scripture pericopes end on a high note. Um, this is definitely one of those that ends on, a, you know, maybe a minor chord instead of a major resolution uh, like we would normally see. Um, but it was an interesting text to preach on and to dig into because we kind of got to see the everybody's human right. angle yeah, yeah. of David. Well, so it, it is, it's one of those stories where this does, that, or rather, the lesson is obvious. Mm -hmm. The lesson is don't do this, right? The like, right. the like scripture, normal <laughs> Bible study, whatever version mm -hmm. of this is, yeah. Uh, this thing he does, yeah, don't, don't, yeah, do, don't that. do that. Don't do that. Don't do it. Don't, when you see a naked woman on her roof, don't then, <sighs> like, I go away. Like, yeah. go the opposite direction. Don't. <laughs> Run the other don't way. go ahead and commit murder. Not only, ha you know, this is, this gets into the fine line of, like, what is rape and what is adultery? Right. Because this is across a different general power. He's just like, send for her. Like the text right. is just like, send for her. And then they have sexual relations. Right. And so is, is like to it, to like a technical definition of rape, how into it that Bathsheba is, is not, is not clear. Is not clear. Although I have seen different theologians try to paint a portrait of Bathsheba, the seductress. In this, um, I have seen, and, and I do not agree with 
this at all because like you said the power dynamic is different um but the the theories are out there that she was bathing on the roof on purpose that she was honored to find the you know the attention of the king and there so, are hollywood versions of this where it was true love and and uriah right, the hittite was in that, the way so often we get these questions of like is it possible that yes right. Literally anything is possible. But the text just says she is bathing on a roof. Right. The text gives an important explanation. She's doing a ritual purification related to, like, the approach to an understanding of menstrual cycles, right? Like, right. So she is... Which she, is also important because that's what tells you that the kid is David's most definitely. Right. Right. Well, and that's what the whole thing that David's trying to set up. Right. Is, okay, I've got a very narrow window where I can make this plausibly <laughs> not my kid. And mm-hmm. so this is what sets up the murder one. Right. Is when all of his tricks to, like, like pass this off as not his kid fails. Yep. Then he's just, okay, fine, I'm going to kill him. Right. But... The text does not, there is, I don't see, you know, I'm not, you know, uh, whatever, trained in Hebrew, but where else was she going to bathe? Right. Like, the on your roof, this was usable space. If you've ever seen, like, the Middle East, many Middle Eastern houses to this day still function yes. this way, of, like, roof as usable space. Yes. And so she is... And, and, like, the ancient world had a heck of a lot less privacy than the modern world. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you read about, like, in the Middle Ages in Europe, like, everyone just slept in a common room. Right. This would have been really, like, this, like, late 20th, 21st century understanding of privacy does not exist. Right. So, I, I the text, nothing I see in this text gives Bathsheba like any agency at all other than when she like tells the king yo I'm pregnant right and so lo- logically the only per- only father this kid can have is, is you David yes well, and this is, th- so this is where the text doesn't say Bathsheba's viewpoint on right. any of None this, of right? None of it. Um, but it does say David's, and David's is very clear. He sends for, he calls for, he makes sure, you know, and that's true now with Bathsheba and also later of Uriah. Of Uriah, and He's right. sending for Uriah. It is very, this is my will, and this is what will be done because I am the king and I hold the power. Much like when we talk about Adam and Eve, it's the reverse, right? Like Adam is the totally passive figure in that, mm-hmm. and Eve is the active figure. Right. And so, like, Adam's an idiot and Eve has ambition. And and, and what is actually, like, (laughs) like Eve gets this terrible rap, but in some ways, like, Eve is the the agent. Eve is the, like, active one. But Adam is standing right there and goes along with the whole darn thing. And so, like, this this has been used to, like, you know, um, twist women's role and all this. But, like, they're both bad. And so this one is the reverse. Wait, or the reverse. This is a reverse Adam, very much a reverse Adam and Eve. Yes. But we have, n- like, how much say? Not even, like, how does she feel about it? This is why I, I when I teach this, and it gets, like, people get uncomfortable because rape is an uncomfortable topic. Yes. But the, this is, to a modern definition, this is, like, what a lot of very famous people like went down for a few years ago in the Me Too movement. Like this is not, Yes. this is certainly as a society, something that we definitely think is not okay now. But even in the ancient world, this is, and, and like Uriah's dialogue draws this out of like, overall, this is a story not just about infidelity and murder, mm-hmm. but a king fundamentally misusing his power over and over again. But it's from like verse one and two where yes. it is David's supposed to be off at battle. Yes. David is famously this like military leader. Mm-hmm. And so David is supposed to be off at battle and he's not. Yes. He's loafing around the palace looking at naked women on roofs. Right. Well, and this is such a contrast from last week. So when you were preaching about how David just desperately wanted to have a house right. for yeah, the ark, yeah, yeah. right? But the ark is off at battle, 
and David is not. Right. The, the Ark, Ark is still out in a tent. Right. And and like Uriah, God, God love, God love him. Right. He is like, no, I will not like go right. home, have a nice evening with my wife. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not going to do that. Like the Ark is out in booths. The soldiers are in booths. All the servants of my Lord are in booths. Yes. And so let me, I'm going to just, I'm going to sleep on a couch with with my bros. Like we are in battle season <laughs> and like I'm going to sleep with my unit because yes. I am this very committed, faithful soldier. Mm-hmm. And so Uriah is time and time again in this text, this foil for David totally falling off his responsibility, yes. totally falling off like who he is supposed to be. He yeah. is abusing power from moment one. He's abusing power because like he has decided that he's not going to do his responsibility. He's just going to loaf around the palace. And then he abuses his, you know, his power by being able to send for this naked woman that he spotted mm-hmm. from his house, who, which is also presumably tall. If I'm thinking about the layout of this, yeah. So the palace is on a higher elevation. Yeah. And so she's not like this. Adds, it's not like she's trying to seduce the king. Like she's, she's just, just there. She's just taking a bath where you take baths. Right. And like the king can survey all mm-hmm. um, that is his, especially because there's no temple to block the view. Mm-hmm. And so he like he can take advantage, take advantage yes. and watch the naked people on their roofs right yep. like this is you know very much like this is peeping tom stuff right and 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 so that's an abuse of power even just being able to watch her is an abuse of power and then be able to send for her and have his way with her is reads like an abuse of power to me yes. in how i read this text and then arranging for uriah to get murdered Yes. Arranging for Uriah to try and cover it up is him abusing his power. Right. Like, you shouldn't be, like, pulling soldiers in and off the front because you want to stage um, a plausible pregnancy. Mm-hmm. And then, obviously, the abuse of power that yeah. is most clear of um, arrange our battlefield tactics so that Uriah, this super faithful, won't leave his dude bros to have a nice night right. at home, will get killed in battle. And that's super contrast between David in this moment to the super principled, yep. honorable Uriah, yep. who will not be, you know, unfaithful, disloyal to David. Right. He's so loyal to David and David's cause that he will not go home, even though presumably that's in walking distance. Right. Like, I mean, clearly, it's within, clearly, it's within it's, sight. It's within peeping Tom distance. Right. Like he and is, he's still not going he home. He is like a block from home. And then he still has to carry his own yeah, death he t- carries his own letter. letter. Like, this he, is, his own assassination instructions are in the letter that he has yeah. to then carry to Joab, who then carries them out. This is also just not everything in the Bible feels like well written like a well written story. Right. But the Deuteronomistic historians generally and this story in particular yes is really good storytelling. Yes. I've been doing kind of an arc of the Deuteronomistic histories which is where we still are. So that is um uh it is the books of history that come after Deuteronomy. Yes. But it's not just because they come after Deuteronomy. Like they're written by these people deeply committed to Deuteronomy and so they are uh, historians writing under the like worldview of Deuteronomy. So that right. is the centrality of the temple, the like the nation exists to worship God and follow the law, mm-hmm. that everybody involved in this exists to worship God and follow the law. Right? That is the kind of pitch of Deuteronomy. Yes. And these are the historians writing about the rise and fall of this nation the right yeah because it carries us through parts of kings so some of kings yeah. some of first and second kings are the like just court records right and some of them are literally like more history and this is um but anyway so i've been doing this arc in bible study so i spent a lot of time with joshua judges um just taught on all of first samuel today and then we're like i'm just everything i'm talking about for the next few weeks is all second samuel yeah um and they are great writers. Yes. In a way that, like, Numbers and Chronicles, I find an absol- absolutely <laughs> unreadable. Very, very difficult to read. Absolutely unreadable. And where the prophets are important, but often impenetrable. Like, right. 
what are they talking about? And then we, we spiral off and do all these terrible things with prophecy and yeah. it has nothing to do with biblical prophecy because right. biblical prophecy is just a voice box from God responding to a specific circumstance. Doesn't Very mean, specific. Doesn't mean we don't have lessons in them, but like anyways. It, it, yeah, yeah. These are, this is the most readable part of the Bible and this is just, as ancient literature goes, this is great. Yeah. You have like dramatic irony, you have character development, you have... You know the the you know, dr- the dramatic irony of the man carrying his own. Right. You see the like schemes. Like this is the way it spirals out of control so very quickly. Goes from you know seeing Bathsheba to murder plot. Right. Right. It's it's just, it's in, comical. All in fifteen verses. Right? This is what this yeah. is fifteen verses. Fifteen verses. This is fifteen verses. Mm-hmm. And over the course of fifteen verses, we get like a nothing like. And again, this is not that far removed from where we were last. This is a few chapters on, but we're not that far removed from where we were last week. But like this right. is, we get, we start with David is not living up to his kingly, kingly duties, but in like a minor, in a relatively speaking minor way right. of just like not doing his duty to, to, like not just like commits adultery, but like can it's potential rape Mm -hmm. to then tries screws up battlefield strategy for the sake of trying to cover up this pregnancy and gets more than just uriah killed by the way because it's a terrible strategy to get him killed other men get killed as well well and you're just you you are take like by him not being on the battlefield Mm -hmm. unnecessary death is happening yes by clearly there is this great soldier when you are manipulating the you know one of your battlefield commanders this this is right again like um it all escalates all in 15 verses this is a god um it all just falls apart it does it does i i equated it in the sermon to um you know that classic i love lucy scene with the chocolates yeah, you know, you know the the conveyor belt of chocolate. So like they want to prove that they can do it, and they're it's all within their power. And so Lucy and Ethel are going to work in the chocolate factory, and they have to wrap up the chocolates. Yeah. And it starts off fine, and they have one or two chocolates that come by, and they can handle it, and then a little more, and then a little more, and then too many. So they start to hide them, or start to eat them, or start to put them in their hats or in their front of their uniforms, yeah. and then it speeds up and it's too much. But they hide all the evidence of it before the their you know supervisor comes back in. Supervisor comes in, sees how wonderful they've done. So what does she say? So it's a, it's speed it up, Greg. Speed it up. This is going great. Speed oh, my God. Up. We finally Let's have... Do some more. But, like, the way that it just spirals out of control so incredibly quickly. I mean, I, I feel like this is really where David felt like he had all the power. Right. Right? Clearly. David, yeah. David felt like his power entitled him to do what he wanted to do in each of these situations, all the way up to murder in the first degree. Um, when clearly that was not the case, right? David is not outside of God's judgment. Um, David is not outside of um, well, and, and David God's is, law. And David is not omnipotent. Right. David cannot, David can't pull off this crime. Yes, Uriah, yeah, like he wants Uriah dead, but like he, like his original conception of this, I guess, is, right. okay, so I, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna make this all, I'm just gonna make this all go away. Yeah. I'm just going to like he's gonna come back <laughs> and like I'm gonna give him leave. Right. And he's gonna go spend some time with his wife. And then it's all just and not then even it's, and it's all and then like this kid yeah. it's just oh it's just Urias, right? Like it's just Urias. Like nothing happened. Like nothing happened. I mean, but there's several points where he's like, Okay, I just got away with it, right? Like right after Bathsheba, he thinks that's the end of it. Until the thing that's out right. of his control happens, which is she gets pregnant. Yep. Okay, well, then the next thing that's in my control, I'll just make it Uriah's problem. Yeah, like yeah, he, yeah. We're just, we're he just can't gonna... control Uriah's principles. Right, right? So it, so it turns out that, like, <laughs> Uriah is too good. Right. It, it, this is, the again, part of the, the great irony of all of this mm-hmm. is you have this guy that is just too good. Yes. And it is this, you know, this foil to, like, David's behavior and shows mm-hmm. in stark relief how far off his game, how far off his kingly, godly, whatever yes. that David is. Yes, absolutely. Well, and and even to this point, because we haven't gotten to what will be next week's scripture yeah. where we have, you know, the, the comeuppance that comes about, you know, from all of this. But, but up to this point, David's like, okay, well, I got away with it. 
you yeah. know? This is where David is, has still seen, and he thinks that his own power is going to protect him, but that is not the case. And I th- and we didn't, well, we chose to do both these scriptures because we're doing this whole, like, throne of God yeah. series. But it is interesting that the people who put the lectionary together, which is where we're, we're pulling these, you know, as we talked about before in the series, like, we're pulling these from the Revised Common Le- Lectionary, right. which is where... 95% of our weekly scriptures come from. I then just structure them in a series to kind of like, I, like the lectionary because it challenges you to look at more texts than just like the 15 you like and, and challenges yeah. you to look at them in different ways because someone else is, has shaped how right. you look at them, shaped like the structure of them. Yeah. Um, and the other piece, so then I just craft them in a series for the sake of coherence mm-hmm. and to give us a sense of like, okay, this is a theme and we're going to talk, we're going to pull together a bunch of scriptures that are from the lectionary that are this theme. So th- right. like we try to do like a little bit of the best of both worlds of like, yeah, series, but from the, with the like coherence of a series, but with the, with the like built in challenge and kind of spiritual push of the lectionary right. to as preachers for us to talk about stories and books that we would naturally avoid. Right. Like, you know. Because no, if I had been choosing this text, I would have chosen to go to the redemption arc right. of yeah, David, yeah. right? Like, you you go to the end of, if, in the Veggie Tales version, this is King George and the Ducky. Yeah. Right? But this is where, at the end, he repents, right? Um, but that is not where the lectionary the, ended, But the election right? doesn't end. The election ends with. The death of Uriah. With the death of Uriah. Right. It's, and then Uriah dies. The with end. the the election right. ends with murder in the first degree. Right. Of uh, uh, David has signed literally signed the death warrant and made the man carry his own death warrant. Yeesh. A lot harder to preach. Yeah. <laughs> and so it forces the camera onto mm-hmm. the the failings right. of and the fallibility of David. Yes. Dot dot dot. There's some redemption here. Yeah. Dot, dot, dot. There are still also consequences here. Yes. Right? Like all of this, you know, we're going to do kind of two weeks of David and his comeuppance in a real way. Right? We're going to see the comeuppance, comma, positive, and the comeuppance, comma, not Not so positive. positive. Not so, like, Mm -hmm. cleanly resolved. Yeah. And I think it is also important to do that where to sit in... And not so quickly jump to no no but then like he got it right no no, no but then, like he like he got it right like but he killed a dude right he, and several dudes in the process to several, get that dude killed. killed and raped potentially raped a person right and like we're gonna meet this kid again yes uh, in a few weeks uh-huh. he plays an important role if you don't know already <laughs> uh, uh, this kid ends up this kid. Um, ends up really important. And there's actually a message in that too. Yes. But that's for another week. Yeah. You can look this up. It's <laughs> it, you've probably figured it out by now. But um, like it it is interesting. I, I found it fascinating. Cause when I when I was, I was building the series, I missed this. Yeah. Like I knew, you know, because you're building these things at speed. And so I didn't initially pick up on that um this story and the confrontation between David and Nathan, which is next week, mm-hmm. were two separate lections. Yeah. And then got really fascinated by the concept of, oh, you just don't get to end it with... Right. Right. You yeah. don't get to end it in the resolved chord. Mm-hmm. Definitely on a minor chord, not a major chord. This is very much a different kind of preaching. Well, and so when we... So we've done... This text I've done a bunch... And one of the places, so there's there's a pop song about this, uh-huh. right? It's Alleluia, yes. right? Um, and so we did, um, <laughs> Jesus, uh, <laughs> summer of rock. four summers of summer of rock uh, was <laughs> many. Uh, so we had this the previous church. We, we had this series called Summer of Rock, where uh, we would pair scriptures and rock songs. And so this is in Alleluia, and this whole scene plays out in Alleluia, and the, the, but like you. Like, that song also makes you sit in this relationship between David's sin and mm-hmm. David's connection to God. Yes. And that both things can be true. Yes. But there is, and, and this is where you took it in the piece, is that line, don't meet your heroes. Yes. Or that even 
people who we hold up as heroes, even if it's not like major moral failing, right. just humans be fallible. Yes. And don't lose sight of that. We were right. talking in Bible study. It kind of framed like the figure of Samuel. And we, we talked, we've talked about him recently, but like mm-hmm. this like hinge point that show that, that where you go from judges to kings. Yes. But this whole arc of the Deuteronomistic history really carries the people from a golden age in Joshua. Yes. To the exile. Yes. And even in David, which is like compared to what's happening in Judges, where uh, uh, spoilers for the book of Judges, a 3,000 year old or 2,500 year old book about, you know, 30, about history from 3,500 years ago. It ends. The last scene in the book of Judges is okay, so a woman gets raped and murdered mm-hmm. by a group of men yep. from the tribe of Benjamin. Then the so it was this guy's concubine. So like the man in this woman's life, mm-hmm. not husband, is a concubine. Right. Thing, is it's different. Not yeah. great. Um but Cuts her up into pieces. Yeah. 12 pieces. Specifically. And mails them to the other tribes of Israel. Yep. To then gather together a four, an army of 400,000 Israelites to then get revenge on other Israelites, the house of Benjamin. Mm-hmm. And so they do. They absolutely slaughter them. But then the good guys in this story then kidnap a bunch of women from other tribes Mm -hmm. because they killed all the women in Benjamin. But now all the men that are left in Benjamin need wives. And so they kidnap a bunch of women and give them to the house of Benjamin Mm -hmm. so that the house of Benjamin may not go away based on the kidnapping of all these people. A lot of bad. Okay, so it's really... Really bad. And this is, I will grant you, better than that. Yeah. It's better. Yeah. This is one guy, or a handful of guys died, and Bathsheba does not get cut up into pieces. Right. And mailed to, to the, the entire other. nation. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. This is good. It's we're better. Pl- we're pleased. We're pleased. It's improvement. But... If you're tracking, if you're keeping score at home, this is nothing like how it was under Joshua. Right. Where Joshua did, Joshua as leader, did everything he was supposed to do. Yes. Every battle he made sure was dedicated to God. And every battle he made sure that he did exactly what God said. He was not caught being idle in his palace watching. Right. He would. Ne- Joshua right. would that never. That's not a thing dream. Joshua would have done. Yeah. Joshua would never dream of like loafing and peeping on women on roofs. Right. Right. And so, and the people go along with him, and it is this. It is this golden age. Yes. And 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 they get all the victories, and it all just like comes together. Yes. And then in Judges, it falls wildly apart. Wildly apart. With the pitch, like, okay, it's going to be better with kings. And right. it is better. Even here, compared to the atrocities of judges, yes, this is better. But... Still not the will of God, though. It's still not the will of God. Mm-hmm. It's still nothing like Joshua. Mm-hmm. And it shows this, like, okay, once it was no longer Joshua, mm-hmm. the... We never, they never get it back. And so right. it, 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 this brings back to, like, the, to me, the, this arc of the Deuteronomistic history is, okay, they're not going to get it right. Right. They're just on their own, human fallibility, human sinfulness, original sin, call yeah. it which, call whatever, the, feel. The problem is us, right? The problem, the is, problem us. is us. The problem is sin. Right. The problem is us. Like we had a we had a question in Bible study. It was like, well, why didn't God just call someone better? And like that's not the point. That's not this the point. This is the, the better is, guy. That it, is the better dude. This is the David better dude. David is the better dude. He is the dude after God's own heart. Still is. Still makes mistakes. Still makes mistakes. Mm-hmm. Still is fallible. Mm-hmm. Still 
abuse, you know, God warns, warns in First Samuel 8, we did this text some weeks ago, mm-hmm. where like, yo, you don't want a king. Right. And I just extrapolated all the other things that we've replaced kings with. But like, yo, yes. like here we see it, that warning playing out. That's the why. This and is the why. Here it why. is. Why is it really better for you to have a direct relationship with God and just do what God says? Right. Because God is not going to peep on a peep on a woman right. bathing on a roof and then murder her husband. Right. Well, and this is very much the so as a parent, have you ever warned your kids like, "Hey, you don't want to do that. You're going to fall, you're going to get hurt, etc., yep. etc." And like with the first kid, it's Hey, you know, I'm so sorry you fell and you picked them up. And, and the, by like the third, fourth, fifth kid, you're like, I told you not to do it. Like, yeah, but I, so I started there, right? Like, yeah. I'm, I'm, heart, I'm fa- you know, famously heartless. <laughs> I just said, like, yo, hey, um, this is, don't, this, don't, don't do that. Don't find out, right? Don't like, find out. <laughs> but, but it isn't like, so again, like, I don't, I don't want to individualize this to David. This is David's mistake. Like, David does a really bad thing. I'm not trying to, like, like, Right. Like but, I'm trying not I'm not trying to redeem his behavior no. or like even even caveat of it, but he's still a good king. He is still a good king, but that's not the point. Yeah. The, the, the point is that like even in the same way that like the Noah story ends with the part of the Noah story that we never read. Right. Where it like ends in this like bad stuff. Bad stuff. Where bad like things happen. Um then there's some nakedness in this too. And, and drunkenness and, and, and all drunkenness. Sorts of bad and it, it ends really awful. In, in the same way that like Abraham is weird, right? Like he he pimps out his wife, yeah, twi- twice, yeah, to like save his own skin, yeah. and like and he and he does it to save his own skin, and so okay, but also he still pimps out his wife, I, I, yeah, right. So like that often in we just we ignore we like to ignore these stories, mm-hmm. and this David story is famous enough that blessedly we we. We, we can't ignore it. Right. They're all, they're almost all like this, save three in the Old Testament, if we're being super honest. Five, if we wrap in Ruth and Esther. Yeah. So it, if it, you add the women in, then you add you Ruth and Esther. <laughs> but but even <laughs> Esther, you have that moment of hesitation. Right. But not, again, like yeah, yeah. She, she needs a push, but like, so it is. If we look at the at the uncomplicated figures, it's a right. really short list yes. of um, Genesis. It's just Joseph. Mm-hmm. It's just Joseph. Just Joseph. Um, and then it is Joshua. Joshua. Um, and then Daniel. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Ruth and Esther. Yeah. Well, I guess you could lump in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in there too. And uh, uh, Hezek- and, and and the good ki- and the Hezekiah quote unquote good, your Hezekiah Josiah. Like, there's some good kings, but like. Yeah. Of like headlining, uh, like Elijah has his own like. Right. L- let's remember that Elijah gets mocked for being bald, and then uh, has a bunch of kids get eaten by she bears. By she bears. Yep. I-, I used to uh, perform with a band <laughs> whose T-shirt said "Don't feed the bears." <laughs> <laughs> gotta love the she bears. You gotta right? love. You gotta love the she bears. Right. And, and so, but like the Old Testament is just like the New Testament. Uh, who has only one uncomplicated figure? His name is Jesus. Mm-hmm. Unmorally, he's 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 complex character. Right. But he is, I guess. Actually, excuse me. There are three uncomplicated uh, figures in the New Testament. It is Mary and Joseph, mm-hmm. who are are perfect children. Right. Uh, do you know? Uh, you know, a, a plucky guy in his early twenties and a plucky lady who's probably sixteen, ish, maybe. <laughs> This is a different time. But, like, they're not, like, like you know, Joseph's God, jo- both the Josephs are God's perfect boys. Right. Um, and Mary is God's perfect girl. Right. Um, and then, obviously, Jesus is literally God, so that's cheating. But everybody so else? Perfection. Yeah. Right. But that's why yeah. I think it's so important that, like, the writers didn't edit yeah. this out. Right. Right. It, right. So much of our own history, I know, gets edited out because it's his story. It's written by the victors, right? History is written by the winners. And so they can paint whatever picture they want. Um, and so the fact that this is included, that this was preserved in our lectionary is so important because it shows our own fallibility. And it, I think some of it comes from the, 
and I, and I, I can't remember if I said this in the show or in Bible study. I've been talking about the Deuteronomistic history so much mm-hmm. over the past couple of months. Yeah. They're all blurs together. But this is at least compiled in exile. Yeah. The, the, these stories are older, and, and, and we don't know when they start being written. But like this is one of those where this chunk of the, a good chunk of the Old Testament gets finished in exile. Right. And so they are looking back at it all went wrong. And right, even though where. it all went wrong, right? Yep. Uh, it all went wrong, not just for David, but yeah. for the whole nation. Right. They are in Babylon. The temple is down. The yes. walls of Jerusalem are down. By the waters of Babylon, we lay down and wept, right? Like this is, yes. you know, and yes. there's these great, there's this great psalm, and I'm not going to pull which one it is, where it's literally like the firsthand report of riding in the cart, uh, looking at the smoking hulk of Jerusalem right. as we're going into exile, mm-hmm. right? And so that's the moment. The the this the Old Testament is not a document compiled in triumph, right? In a way that the New Testament is. Right. New Testament is a document con- compiled where we're about to become like the books are older. And, yeah. he, and, and so, like, the books have some struggle bus in them, mm-hmm. but the as New Testament's document is written in a moment of triumph. We're, we're about to be, Constantine has converted, we're about to be legal. Uh, we're <laughs> legal now. We're almost legal. We're almost legal. <laughs> and so it's a, it's a document that comes out of triumph. Right. Compiled in triumph. Written in the era of the struggle bus. Right. right? Like, Matthew is not triumphant. Paul is not triumphant. You know, Paul writing to the Corinthians is the opposite of triumphant. Mm -hmm. You know, John is trying desperately to convince the Greek world that we're the right kind of crazy, not the wrong kind of crazy. We're crazy, but (laughs) it's just the right kind of crazy. Yes. You know, Luke is trying to carry on a legacy of a mentor claimed too early, right? All of this. Mm -hmm. But the Old Testament is compiled largely and then a few things tacked on the edges afterwards mm-hmm. in a moment of devastation. Yes. And I think that's how you – that gives a clarity. I think. I, you know, I don't know. But that gives a – to me, that gives a clarity of why you leave in a story of, okay, yes. I see, even in this, like, good moment with this good dude. It whoa. all went – wrong he screwed like he's just like us yes he screwed up too the problem is us the problem is us the, pro- the deuteristic history historians really want you to know really want you to know yeah the problem is us the problem is us hi it's me i'm the problem it's me yeah right it's just the like the yeah. book of acts really wants you to know that you're the the, the new just really wants to know that you're also the answer Yes. Right? Like, I, I, hey, someone, I, I, this comes up a lot in, in this, you know, the English side of our ministry is wildly under under uh, volunteered. And so I get a lot of, like, yeah, we should do that. I'm like, yeah, okay. Uh, who? Go for it. Go for it. Yeah. You're the answer. I mean, we're the answer too, but like, we are. It, it's not the professional, reli- this is the other show, but like, it's not the professional religious people. It's uh, all of, it's all it's of everybody. us. It's everybody. All of, it's you too. But the, this part, the Old Testament writ large, and certainly mm-hmm. this part of the Old Testament wants you to know that we're all the problem. Yes. We are all, we are all the problem. Yes. Even David. Mm-hmm. So it's not like, anyway, I'll, I'll, land, I'll land this point and <laughs> I can keep going on this forever. We're going to, we have a whole we have a couple more weeks to talk about how complicated this dude is. Yes. But it is not that David stopped being the king after God's own heart. Right. It is merely he is still a human king. Human. Right. He is still a human king. And so he, in this, like, cycle of brokenness that the nation finds themselves in, they're still there. Yes. They are still there. And that's not changing. That's not changing, right? right. It's Christ that changes that. Yes. And it's Christ that changes that not because anything changed about us, mm-hmm. but because Christ opens up this way. Yes. Period. Like that's, that's the connective tissue. Anyways, if, if, if you have your own thoughts on David and Bathsheba, I welcome them. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk more about this because we're doing this kind of really deep dive on David and Solomon. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, and we've st- we're about midway through the series, and so there are still three or four episodes of this show left to go. Um, and so if you have thoughts, we'd love to hear them. The goodness of God pod at gmail.com. This is the goodness of God pod at gmail.com. This show and everything else we do here in the Media Lab is made possible by a generous innovators grant by the Texas Annual Conference, the United Methodist Church. If you'd like to support us, like, comment, subscribe, share, leave us five star reviews on Apple Podcasts. All of that helps this show go further and thus helps us be more sustainable. If you are looking for more content from us, Lord knows we make a lot of it, and there is more on the way. Um, we are at Servants Now on all of the things, on the TikTok, on the on the Instagram, on the, the Facebook, on the YouTube, and uh, uh, ServantsNow.org on the internet. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. We'll see you next time.